Okay, I can almost guarantee that the notes in this envelope are things you have never seen before. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here. Today's video is a continuation of my series from the last two weeks about an insane silver and banknote purchase that I made. Two weeks ago, I showed you literally over 10 pounds of silver bullion and coins that I purchased. And last week, I showed you the thousand dollars worth of rare US and Canadian banknotes that were part of that collection. And this week, we're going to end the series by finally revealing what's inside this mysterious pencil case thing that came with it as well. And yes, I peeked. And there are some truly unusual banknotes inside. Now before we take a look at the banknotes inside that pencil case, I want to make an announcement. Every single year, I try and up my game on my channel, and this coming year is no exception. So that's why this year I decided to bite the bullet and spend over $2,500 on new camera equipment, lenses, lighting, and much, much more so that the video viewing experience for you guys will get better and better and more enjoyable. And I also need to say a massive, massive thank you to all of my Patreon patrons who helped make this possible. Your support is unreal and I cannot thank you enough. Now, that camera equipment should arrive in a couple of weeks, so just in time for me to start making new videos with better and better content in 2021. But until then, we're stuck with the camera that I got, but it is gonna do the job and we are gonna take a look at these awesome banknotes. Let's go. So as you can see, we've got this old pencil case looking thing over here and you can see through it that there is an envelope in there and of course there are banknotes in there. And we're going to take a look at this in just a second, but first we need to take a look at a banknote from last week's video that I, uh, well, let's say I missed it. This is a $1 Canadian banknote that I basically just dismissed as another $1 Canadian note. But as I found when I was destroyed in the comments section that I clearly missed something really, really big. And that is, of course, this has a fancy serial number, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right, this is a perfect ladder note, starting at one, going all the way up through seven. And not only that, but this note is in pristine condition. Take a look at that. Look at this. This is in absolutely spectacular condition and it is a truly one of a kind note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How on earth did I miss that? I have no idea, but I appreciate everyone in the comment section who let me know. Now, I did get in contact with the fellow that I bought this collection from and let him know that I made a mistake and we've worked out a new deal and we're actually going to split the proceeds from this, uh, whatever comes. So I'm going to be uh, selling this and I'm taking offers. So if you're interested, uh, let me know. Shoot me a message on Instagram at the Silver Picker. All right, back to business. Let's check out this box and see what is in there. All right. Got our pencil case and we've got our envelope. Let's get rid of this and see what we've got in the envelope. Okay, so you can see it's a lot of banknotes, another bit from Canada, and let's just start with that. All right, so the first note we have is this Canadian $1 Centennial of the Canadian Confederation from 1967. And in the last video, I thought that this was a stylized Star of David, but actually it is a stylized maple leaf. Uh, still looks very similar to a Star of David, but in any case, the maple leaf certainly makes more sense. Now, this is actually not just one bill, but there are several in here, and they're all exactly the same. And what you'll notice is that in the place of where the serial number normally is, you have this commemorative date of 1867 to 1967 on both sides. Now, they made these, I believe, for collectors uh, that they could purchase them. And I'm still a little confused as how they can make legal tender currency without a unique serial number. So if anybody can explain that in the comments below, I would really appreciate that. I haven't been able to find information on how that works. But basically, these are identical to the banknotes that were for circulation, except, as you can see from the previous video, this one has a normal, real serial number. 
but otherwise they're exactly the same. Now I believe these ones are a little bit rarer and, and worth a little bit more, but these ones are still beautiful. And this one is in absolutely spectacular condition. Look at that, really, really cool. So I'm gonna hold on to one of these for my own collection and the rest I will probably sell. Not bad. Now, if you haven't noticed, by the way, we are doing a value ticker right over here. So you'll be able to see the value of all the notes that we go through and follow along. Next up, we've got another little packet of notes over here. And these look like a bunch of foreign notes. So let's take them out and check them out one by one. First one we see is a 1000 lira note from Italy. This looks like it's probably from the uh, 50s or 60s. Uh, it's a nice note, but you know, not really worth anything. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing that I buy and I get stacks and stacks of them and I pay, you know, just a couple bucks for the whole stack. No special serial number. Don't worry, I'm going to be checking them all. Next, we've got what looks like a Russian banknote. I always forget if these are Russian or Mongolian or uh, one of the other former Soviet states. Um, but it's a really cool note, but it's in awful condition and these are very, very common. So also not really worth anything. Hopefully we'll have some nicer notes coming soon. Over here we have a 20 franc note, and this is from Belgium. It's pretty cool, but again, it's stained and this is not a rare note or anything. It's from 1964, so not worth a whole lot. All right, I've had several of these in the past, and this is a 20 foreign note from, uh, you can see it says Magyar. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but that is Hungary. You can see Budapest, 1969. And I've gotten a bunch of these notes. I believe you can actually still trade these in for uh, actual uh, modern currency, but really not worth anything uh, otherwise. And also no special serial number. Cool, very, very cool design though. Very, very cool design. I think this is probably like the packet of notes that are really not worth that much. This is a one pound note uh, from the Bank of England. I don't believe this is demonetized, but I believe it's worth just one pound. You can see it's got like a bunch of stains. It looks like there was like a rubber band that melted on this lot. Um, you know, this is cool for anybody that doesn't get a chance to see a lot of foreign banknotes. You know, this is a nice little uh, primer as to what you can find, but you can usually find these for pretty cheap. This would be worth, you know, a little bit. It's uh, from France and it's actually a really cool note. I love how it looks, but it's got a ton of pinholes here. Somebody's been, you know, putting it up on their cork board or something. It's got a missing corner and, you know, really, really not worth that much. Also, somebody wrote 100.00 on here. So not really worth much. Next up is a really, really interesting note, and this is a 10 peso note from the Gobierno Provisional de Mexico. So it's from the uh, Provisional Government of Mexico. This one is from 1914, it looks like, and it's a really interesting note. But there are a couple of things that actually make me suspect that it is not authentic. So one of the things that is really interesting is that it has this red overprint for the serial number. And you see the same on the reverse. You see this sort of red overprint with this seal and that actually makes me think that it may be authentic but what is a little strange is that it is in excellent shape like the note itself is very crisp paper but it does have like a dirty faded look to it and the actual printing is very grainy the actual printing is kind of fuzzy and that kind of leads me to believe that this is not an authentic note um, I don't know if this is a popular enough note for people to be counterfeiting, uh, but it does have that same feel as those uh, souvenir Confederate notes that I showed you that were produced basically since the Civil War, but meant entirely as a souvenir. So if anybody who's an expert on these can give me some more information and let me know. If it is real, it's probably worth about 10 bucks, which is not bad at all. Uh, but if it's fake, it's probably worth nothing. Next up is a really, really nice bill. This is a $1 note from Canada from 1937. And this is really cool because I just like the Canadian bills. I think they're really, really nicely done. This one has a portrait of King George VI. Uh, the following series uh, is where you got the Queen Elizabeth notes. Um, and this does not have a fancy serial number or anything, and it's not in great shape. It's got a little stain on it, but it is still worth a little bit because it is a classic note. And look at that. I mean, look at the design. I absolutely love this. This looks very, very similar to sort of like an early US design from that same period. And I really, really like it. I think it's a beautifully designed note. And I'm gonna hold on to this one in my own collection. Uh, there are three different varieties of uh, these notes with three different signatures here. I believe the one with coin, which I have, is the most common. So definitely uh, the best note so far. 
All right, next up is a 10,000 lira note uh, from the Bank of Italy, and it does not have a fancy serial number, and it's not in great shape, and it's really not really worth much. Uh, I, like I said, usually buy notes like this in big stacks of like 100 notes at a time for just like three or four bucks. Um, you could probably sell this on eBay for like two or three dollars, but only by virtue of the fact that somebody somewhere might want it for their collection. Uh, and after shipping and, and eBay fees, you'll be lucky if you end up with like 70 cents. Uh, and that's only if you end up selling it. So not really worth much. All right, the next note are two of the same. They are both 25 cent fractional currency notes from 1900 from Canada, uh, from the Dominion of Canada. And these are really cool. This one's in really ratty shape, but you can see they're very, very similar in nature and design to the US fractional currency of around the same time. Uh, I did learn from the comments section of my last video uh, that these are actually uh, sort of referred to in slang as shin plasters because you could sort of hide them in your sock. That's the story I was told, so thank you to everybody that made that comment. These are really cool and they're worth a couple bucks, so not bad at all. Now before we get to our last item, which is this envelope of very interesting notes, we have this. This is a set of four US postage stamps. I have no idea what the significance is of these or why they were included in the lot. Um, as far as I can tell, they're only worth about face value, which is five cents a piece. But if any of you philately enthusiasts out there uh, can tell me if this is anything special, I would definitely appreciate it. All right, we finally made it. Take a look at this. For those of you who can read the handwriting here, it says, for Korea, no, unk. Now we know what four means, there's probably four bills. We know what Korea means. We know what unk means, uncirculated. But what is no? Hmm. These are the ones that I took a peek at and were excited about. These are not just any Korean notes, but these are North Korean notes. And there is a very, very distinct reason to why these are so interesting. So first off, let's take a look at the notes one by one. We have over here to start, we have a five North Korean won note. Uh, no special serial number or anything, but it's really, really just interesting. You see sort of this proud nation uh, with a, a man with his hand on the globe, uh, sort of to show what I believe to be like a, a world domination type style. Uh, and of course you see this, this atomic particle floating over here to sort of hint at North Korea's uh, atomic uh, prowess and atomic uh, endeavors and that is really really interesting and then on the reverse I'm not sure what this building is it looks like uh, either like a historical or, or a religious building it does not particularly look like a, a uh, government building but somebody can correct me who can read that in Korean uh, I'd really appreciate it now the next note we have is also a 5 won note. I believe it's just from a later date because this one I can't find the date on it, but this one says 2002. So I believe they're the same denomination uh, just from a different series. And this one over here, I believe this is Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il um, looking out into the distance proudly. And you can see that this nuclear uh, atomic particle is right front and center and it is gigantic. So they really, really up the bar on that. On the reverse, you see kind of an unimpressive looking hydroelectric electric dam, uh, which is kind of a perplexing choice for me, uh, given that they're all about sort of this show of bravado and technology. This doesn't look particularly uh, technologically advanced, even in 2002. But the really interesting thing, aside from the notes itself, is the fact that I own them. Now, why is that interesting? Well, these notes are actually totally illegal to take outside of North Korea. You are absolutely strictly prohibited from, as a, as a non-North Korean to take any banknotes or any money outside of the country. And of course, since North Koreans themselves are not really allowed to leave the country other than under very strict supervision and only for very elite people, uh, these should not ever be taken out of the country. Um, and of course, you know what happens when you take something out of the country that's prohibited. There was the tragic story of Otto Warmbier several years ago, who was accused, probably you know, not truthfully, of stealing a propaganda poster and trying to smuggle it out of the country. And he, was, and he ended up being uh, imprisoned, tortured, and ultimately sent home in a coma where he later uh, passed away. Very, very sad story. 
So the fact that these notes, uh, somebody risked taking these out of the country is absolutely crazy. Um, but this is the, the Tenwan note, and you can see it looks like uh, different branches of their military. We have the, uh, the, I guess with the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force would be over here. And on the reverse, we see a very, uh, I guess I would even say like a violent statue of a, of a warrior North Korean soldier uh, carrying the North Korean flag. Really, really interesting. And these notes are indeed in pristine condition. Now, many of you may who have been real long-time viewers of my channel will know that I have actually shown North Korean currency in the past. And those bills I got because I actually purchased them at the DMZ or demilitarized zone when I visited the South Korean, North Korean border, of course, from the South Korean side uh, back in 2012 or 2013. But these are totally different from a different series and these ostensibly were not sold as souvenirs. These were sold, I, I mean, I believe these are just regular North Korean banknotes that were somehow smuggled out of the country, probably through China. There's a lot, a lot of black market trade that goes on through the Chinese border. Um, I actually believe these notes are even printed in China by China, so um, it is definitely possible that some made it out before they even made it into the country of North Korea. Um, so this is super, super interesting. Um, these are not worth a whole lot. I did look online and found that these are only worth a couple bucks a piece, maybe $5 for the whole set. But what's interesting is that because there is an embargo against North Korea, you're not really allowed to buy these uh, legally in the United States. Um, obviously, I, I received these uh, you know, sight unseen, but you're not allowed to sell these on eBay from what I understand, and you're not allowed to pay for them on PayPal because these are legal, current, legal tender in North Korea. Uh, you're not allowed to convert uh, US currency into North Korean won. So you can't like buy North Korean currency on PayPal. So there's a lot, a lot of restrictions about these. So I will not be selling these. I do have an idea for a future video about them, but how freaking cool is that? Now I know these aren't worth a lot, but I think that this was still worth, uh, worth the wait to get a chance to really see these uh, you know, in all their, their glory. If any of you have ever been to North Korea or have been to the DMZ in South Korea or are Korean and have some more context about these notes, I would really appreciate it if you would put it down in the comments below. So question for the day is, do you guys know any other interesting aspects of these North Korean banknotes? So what'd you think? Now, it was definitely a smaller part of the haul, but it still had some really, really interesting banknotes. I'm definitely gonna hold on to the North Korean ones because I have some other ideas for some other videos, but everything else is probably gonna be for sale, so if you're interested, shoot me a message on Instagram at the Silver Picker. Now, if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please, please consider hitting the like button, and even better, hitting the subscribe button. That would be the greatest holiday New Year's gift that you could give to me, and I would appreciate it so, so much. Now, I can't wait to make more videos for you in 2021, but we still have one left in 2020. So I got a lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike. So stay tuned. And until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. Again, thank you so much for your contributions that are enabling me to make such amazing equipment upgrade purchases like the camera and the lighting. I can't wait to show you my new videos. If anybody who is not yet a patron is interested in becoming one, the links are below. Thank you all so, so much.